Tom, your whole theory is based on the concept of virtual reality. And oftentimes you use video games such as World of Warcraft as an example of a virtual reality. But can you tell us the difference, please, between our virtual reality and those virtual realities you use to explain? Sure. First, let me comment on the similarities because there's lots of similarities between those, which is why I use those as an example. All virtual realities have a few things in common. It's just the nature of being a virtual reality. So any virtual reality, whether it's the world of Warcraft or whether it's um, this physical universe that we live in, has these attributes. And that is that the computer computing it can't be inside it. Okay. Simple. The computer computing the virtual reality is not a virtual computer being computed by the computer that's computing it. You see, we get into a logical loop there that uh, doesn't make any sense. So the computer has to be non-physical to the virtual reality that is outside the, the virtual reality. And the second thing is, is that the player who's playing the character in the virtual reality has to also be non-physical to the virtual reality and be outside of the virtual reality. The player itself that's making the choices for the avatar, that's what virtual reality means. It's a computed reality, so the characters in the computed reality aren't real characters, they're just avatars. And the real player that's playing those can't be inside the virtual reality, it has to be outside the virtual reality. So both the computer and the player have to be external to the virtual reality. That means they have to be non-physical from the perspective inside the virtual reality. And indeed, the computer and the player have to uh, be in the same reality because they communicate with each other. That's what makes the virtual reality a game. The computer and the player are interactive with each other. Now, that's the similarity. And like I say, all virtual realities share those attributes. The differences are in how the virtual reality is actually produced, how it's put together. That's where all the differences are. Uh, there can be differences of resolution. Some virtual realities can look like little stick people that have very jerky motions. Some virtual realities look very much like our physical reality. The motion is smooth and the, you get facial expressions on the characters and so on. So there's, there's a difference in things like resolution, uh, how realistic is it, or how abstract is it. And a primary difference between the games and our reality is that our reality is an evolved virtual reality. It started not with a bunch of programmers that were going to have to create it, but it started with a rule set that defines interactions within the reality and some initial conditions, which are some constants. And then the run button was hit and it started to evolve. Okay, those initial conditions started to change according to the rule set. And they continued to change according to the rule set. And they changed and they changed and eventually they turn into a virtual reality. They evolve characters. They evolve the avatars. So think of it in terms of the big digital bang. The initial conditions are a very uh, dense, very hot ball of plasma. When the run button is hit, that plasma gets to change according to the rule set. The rule set has things like gravity and, and uh, because of the heat and pressure and all those things that we call science as, as our rule set. So it started to expand and as it expand, some parts of it would cool and as they cooled, you ended up with suns and planets and all the things we have now. That's the evolution of our virtual reality, the evolution of our physical universe. Okay? It evolved from initial conditions like the plasma and a rule set. Now, that is not the way the World of Warcraft was created. It's not the way The Sims were created or any of the other virtual reality games we play. They were made, basically, by programmers. Now, they're not all the same either. World of Warcraft is an older game. So everything in World of Warcraft and everything in Sims, because they're both older games, are programmed. A programmer put them there. 
if you're sitting on a chair in The Sims, that chair was put there by a programmer just as your person, your, your avatar. Everything in that game had to be created by a programmer. Now programmers have tools they can copy and then paste so they don't have to program every tree individually. They can program a bunch of trees and then copy those and paste them to make a whole forest. So they have shortcuts, but all of it is put there because somebody programs it. In our reality, we ended up with this sun, this planet, and life on this planet, and you know amoebas and jellyfish and fish and reptiles and then eventually we you know got primates and us and and now here we are so we evolved over time in this virtual reality we are a product of the rule set really the initial conditions and the rule set so we are constrained by this rule set now in the uh, Sims and World of Warcraft, they're also constrained by rule sets. Sims players can't just suddenly get rich because they find gold in the backyard. That's not part of that game. Elves and, and barbarians can't just flap their arms and fly. It's not part of that rule set. So all virtual realities are limited by the rule set. But in our case, ours evolved according to our rule set. In most of our computer games, the rule set was put in place by programmers in order to mimic our physical reality. In other words, things kind of work in our virtual reality games like they do here. There's gravity. Everybody isn't floating around. You see, well, that's mimicking the way it is in our reality, the way our reality evolved. And the characters kind of look humanoid, you know, with heads and shoulders and arms and legs and so on, because that mimics what evolved in ours. So we try to make our virtual realities kind of look like ourselves because that's credible to ourselves. But ours wasn't programmed. It just evolved. And it could have evolved in dozens of different ways, but it didn't. Chance and other things came to bear and it is what it is. Mostly it's because that's the way the rule set is, but sometimes there were choices that could have been made and it could have gone one of you know, 10 different ways. And it just happened to go the way it went and we just happened to be here now having this discussion. So that is the major difference between our virtual reality and say the World of Warcraft or The Sims or some other. Now some of the newer virtual realities also are not programmed in the same way that the older ones were. In other words, every tree isn't necessarily planted where it's going to stay on that map forever. Some of the newer games have procedural programming, which means that what the critters look like, you know, where the trees are, uh, how the river flows, is and all those details are not programmed. They take random numbers, take a random draw, and based on the random numbers, then they create environments they create avatars and things based on uh, models that they have and variations with randomness. And that then is a much quicker way and a cheaper way to do the programming. Let the computer you know, work out the details rather than paying people to put all those details in there. It's a much more efficient way to go also because you only produce the information that a user wants to use. You don't produce it and keep it. As soon as that avatar looks away, then you no longer compute what he was looking at. It's just gone. You don't save it. When he looks back there, you recompute it because it's just that easy. So that's very similar to the way our reality works as well. Our virtual reality only sends data to a player who needs it. So if you don't need that data, then that data doesn't get sent to you. It's not that uh, you know, things disappear because you don't look at them. They were never there in the first place. All those things are virtual. It's just that the computer is not sending me data to show me what's behind me because I don't have eyes in the back of my head, so there's no point in that. It would just be a waste of computer time to try to generate what's behind me 
things that you can't see, the things that are right behind my chair that, that, uh, that you can't see either. Why should the computer generate any of that? There's nobody there that needs that data, that's looking at that data. So it's not that those things disappear because we don't look at them. Those things don't exist. They're just virtual things that have to be computed. Our reality is computed. It's not really made out of little massy things. So those are the differences. Virtual reality is virtual reality, but ours is evolved. Now we do have some universities who do exactly what uh, I was talking about as far as uh, evolving a reality. They start with initial conditions and a rule set, push the run button and let it evolve. And some of those have been evolving in computers, in computer science departments in major universities for years and years and years and they can do some very interesting and amazing things. Okay, so that, that same strategy, if you will, in producing virtual reality has been done by us many times. It doesn't turn out quite as grand as this one, but uh, that is the way it works. It's a rule set and initial conditions. That's why we're limited. You see, that's why if your avatar, say, has brain damage, gets hit in the head with something that gives him brain damage, the consciousness doesn't get brain damage. The consciousness is the player, but the consciousness now has to play a character that has a lot more constraints. The player can't do things, or maybe the player's in a coma, or maybe the player uh, can't walk, or can't remember. Then the consciousness has to play a character that has those additional constraints. And if those constraints heal and go away, then the consciousness can progressively play more things, you know, has more uh, things that it can do. If they don't, or if they get worse and the avatar dies because of the rule set, then the consciousness's player goes away and they have to go get another player. You see, so the, the conscious can't just do anything at once. It can only play with the character within the bounds of what the rule set allows. In that way, all virtual realities are the same.